I've already asked people, uh, have, have people ask me to keep my remarks short. And since I have to yell, I'll keep them short anyway. Uh, but I want to welcome everybody out to PugCon. Hope everyone's having a wonderful time. I'm Jared Smith, if you don't know me. I'm the Fedora Project Leader. I'm happy to, to do kind of a traditional thing here at the PugCon event, as that's kind of the state of Fedora address. Um, I'll try to make my, my remarks brief, like I said. Glad everybody braved the cold weather to come here. Um, hopefully get a little bit of a blizzard here for, for some of our international visitors, just to give you a good taste of Virginia. We do get all four seasons here in Virginia, so glad to have you here. Uh, before we get too far into this, I just want to say thank you to Virginia Tech. We love Virginia Tech, and, and particularly the math department, Ben Williams, for, for really sponsoring us here. Hey, Ben, we need you! Where's Ben? Somebody want to run out and grab Ben quickly? Hey, Ben, come here for a minute. We need you. So we have a we have a little gift for Ben here to, as, as a way of saying thank you um, for all the all the great work he's done in organizing our fun on here. We have a red hat keyboard. Oh. Amazon. Sponsoring the lunch tomorrow. Woo! We love our FUDCON sponsors. Last but not least, our primary sponsor, Red Hat. Thank you. All right. So the state of the state of Fedora address. How's Fedora doing? I think Fedora's doing pretty darn well. It's not perfect, but I think we've had a tremendous year over the past year. As you all know, we have our four foundations, freedom, friends, features, and first. And I'd like to use these four foundations just very, very briefly to talk about what happened in 2011. Let's start off with freedom. When I think about freedom, I think of being able to source, being able to set your own destination, being able to do the things that you want to do because you love doing them. I thought it was a pretty good year for freedom in, in 2011. Um, both individual freedom and software freedom. That's not to say there aren't st still some dark clouds out, out there on the horizon that we need to watch out for, but I think it was a pretty good year. How about friends? Anybody do anything with friends in Fedora in 2011? Raise your hand. We had a lot of events in Fedora. I think we had somewhere between 180 and 200 <coughs> different events that Fedora was at or Fedora helped sponsor. Um, in 2011. That's absolutely amazing. So give everybody a, a big round of applause for everything that they did. <laughs> as quickly as some of the, some of the highlights, um, you know, we had a, a FUDCON in, in Panama, we had a FUDCON in Milan, we had a FUDCON in Pune, India, and then here we are in, in Blacksburg. Um, I want to talk about features. We had a lot of features. We had a couple of Fedora releases. We had Fedora 15, which was a, a very exciting release. Um, not without controversy, not without uh, a lot of buzz, but it was a, it was a good solid release. Um, download numbers for, for Fedora 15 were absolutely amazing. Um, so in, in some way, even though it was a, maybe a, a little bit of a controversial um, release, it did get people out there downloading it and trying it. It also helped push our spins quite a bit and get, got more people familiar with our spins. So I thought Fedora 15 went, went fairly well. And then in the last fall, we had Fedora 16 release, which is another good, solid release. Not without a little controversy, as some of our releases are, are, are want to do, but a, but a good, solid release there. The thing that I want to highlight, though, is these are all a work in progress. Fedora 16 was not perfect. There was Fedora 15. Is Fedora 17 going to be perfect? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Until it's released, and then we're going to work on Fedora 18, right? So it's a work in progress. We want to make sure that we're continuing to, to kind of set the standard as far as features out there. Fedora leads, it doesn't follow. So we want to keep, keep along with that. Last but not least, I want to, um, you know, I want to make sure that, that Fedora is the place where people come to do fun, exciting new things in, in free and open source software. But it can't be just a collection of packages. We're not just trying to race to see who has the most packages. There's more work that needs to be done there, especially when it comes to integration of different packages, right? It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter if we have this upstream 
software packages and this upstream software package, if they don't fit together nicely, play well together and build something that cohesively is bigger than the sum of the parts. So I think that's one of the challenges we have moving into, into 2012 is how do we make sure that integration across different packages works as well as it should. Um, last but not least, I want to talk about the, the concept of first. Fedora always wants to be first, right? And I love this, this picture here. Um, I'll tell a quick story here about this picture. This picture is, is, uh, was taken on a, on a river in Wyoming. It's called uh, Two Oceans Creek. And the reason it has the name Two Oceans Creek is because it sits right on the Continental Divide. Okay? And it actually splits and turns into Atlantic Creek and Pacific Creek. And if you know anything about geography and the Continental Divide, well, Atlantic Creek runs into the Yellowstone River, runs into the Missouri River, runs into the Mississippi River, out to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Pacific Creek runs into the Snake River, that runs into the Columbia, the Columbia runs into the Pacific Ocean. So just by moving a few inches or a few feet in that river, that water is going to end up in the Atlantic or it's going to end up in the Pacific. <coughs> and so we have a very, very important role in Fedora, not just in the, the bits and the bytes that we ship out there on the, on the CDs every six months, but in the project as a whole and what we're pushing forward because we really have, because we're you know, sitting between upstream and downstream, we're in a, a great position to determine our own course and the course of those who follow after us a little further downstream. So I think it's a very, very uh, unique role that we have. We also have a unique role in that we want to make sure that we're remembering the lessons from the past, but still charting and pioneering new territory. And so we have to have this balance, right, between the old and the new. We don't want to throw out all the lessons that we've collectively learned over the past 20 or 30 years, right? At the same time, we don't want to be stuck in a 20-year-old in a mentality. We want to be out there pioneering and charting new ground. So we have to find the right balance between those two. We've come a long way since. Core core one, right? <laughs> Anybody remember that? Yeah. yeah. A lot, lot of changes there. We have a lot of changes to come. Um, the reason I threw this slide in there is that one of the one of the challenges we're going to have over the next release or two is a rewrite of Anaconda. Where's the Anaconda team here? The oh, there's there's one. one. So that's that's one one big thing that we're going to learn. There's a lot of other features though that we're going to be adding over the over the next several releases. I just found this picture. And I thought, you know, that, that'll bring back some memories. So now I'll take just a couple of minutes and talk about vision. What do we want to do in 2012? Same as usual, or do we want to take it up a notch? I wish it was as easy as this picture right here, and you just turn, turn the knob a little bit, and the vision becomes clear. But I want to share with you some of the things that I think are important that we tackle in 2012. Um, how many people were here for the board meeting that we had last night? I think there was 20, 25 people in the room. One of the things we did in our board meeting last night is we took a look back at, at, at 2011. Um, we took a look back at, yeah, if, if you were in uh, FUDCON at Tempe, we had a, a board meeting there and we talked about goals for the, for the next two releases. We kind of set some high level strategic goals and then everybody got burned out. Nobody really you know, did any tactical movement on the ground, forward movement, to try to accomplish those goals. So in yesterday's board meeting, we decided to take a different tack this year. And we talked about having the board members themselves champion different projects with, within the Fedora community. And by February 1st, we're going to have the list of the projects that the board wants to champion. And then we'll be providing updates on those things that, that we're going to champion. The rest of my talk here is five ideas that I think might be very important things that we may want to champion. Now, I don't have all the answers. I want input from you as well. So if you see some of these things and you think they're great, let us know. If you have other ideas that weren't shown up here that you think are more important, come let the board know. And we'll, we'll, we'll take that into account as, as we work toward setting those, those things that we want to champion over the next year. So five things I think are important. First of all, Fedora is an incredible set of tools. And that's what you want in an operating system, isn't it? Yeah. The whole reason you use an operating system is to give you the tools that you need to do your job. And hopefully stay out of your way so that you can use them, right? But how many times for a new user are they a little overwhelmed with all the different tools and all the different things you can do? And, and they see this, okay, I sit down, I see I've got pliers, I've got a ruler, I've got an X-Acto knife, but how do I use that? So I think one, one focus we need to have over the next year is helping to help bridge that gap, especially for, for new users. I've had the privilege of watching several people 
use Fedora for the first time. Pop in a live CD or boot off of a live USB key. They log in. They've got a desktop, and then they say, now what do I do? So we need to give them a little more help. Give them a map that says, you are here. Now, there's several things we could do here. One proposal I have is that um, when you log into a machine for the first time, there may be a little thing that pops up. We can do it as part of first boot or something like that. I don't want to get too, too far into the details of the implementation. But the idea being that, hey, are you new to Fedora? Do you need you know, a, a quick tutorial on how to get around the basics? We may even use that opportunity to point out things like, hey, we're a community that, that, that values collaboration. And here's some ways you might be able to, to contribute or collaborate with us. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're mostly a volunteer organization. We have a different you know, support structure that maybe you're used to. Some of those sorts of things. That would be a, a good opportunity to share those. So there's that. The whole point I want to do uh, is, is try to reduce any kind of barriers to entry that, that we put up, whether we realize it or not. Sometimes we forget what a struggle it was for us when we first started with open source and how difficult it was to, to get around a DI and things like that. You know, heaven forbid we have to use Emacs. But uh, <laughs> the idea is you know, find, find these barriers to entry and, and try to tear them down. The second thing is, and the picture's a little dark, I don't know if you can tell us what this. Anybody tell us what it is? Nut. What kind of a nut? Acorn. <laughs> it's an acorn nut. It's an acorn nut, also known as a lug nut, right? How many here belong, people belong to a Linux users group or a lug? How many people think that Fedora's done a tremendous job of interacting with Linux users groups and reaching out to Linux users groups? No. No, not me. So the second focus I think we should focus on this year is doing a better job of reaching out to Linux users groups, local computer users groups. Um, how many people here help run a Linux users groups or participate actively in Linux users groups? What's the biggest problem you have when you're running a Linux users group? Linux users. Finding Presentation. a speaker. Finding a speaker. What are we going to talk on this month, right? Now, wouldn't it be great if Fedora had some presentations out there that says, oh, here's you know, what's coming up in, in Fedora 17. There's a presentation already done, and you can use that as a base. Or here's this new feature. Or Things like, you know, Thomas, you know, like, like your presentation, SE Linux for Mere Mortals. How would it be if we had that in a, in a form that, that, you know, Linux users groups had a library they could go to, download that, and have something they could start out with? So, so that's a, another idea. I think we need to do a, a, a good job of, of reaching out to Linux users groups and, and using those resources that are out there. The next thing I want to talk about is mentoring. It doesn't do us any good if we're the only people working on the forum. We need to continue to grow the community, both the user community and the developer community. And the way we do that is through mentoring and teaching, right? One of the things I love about the Fedora community is I, I show up to Fedora every day, and I get to learn something new. Because I'm not an expert in all things. There's so many people here that know more things than I do, and it's a chance for me to learn. But we need to make sure we keep that mentality of mentorship pushing through. Um, I don't know if anybody read, uh, there was a blog entry by Dave Neary, I think it was about three months ago, and he talked about mentorship and just how hard mentorship is. And he quoted a statistic that said that for every four people you mentor, probably only one of those is going to stick around long enough to actually contribute in a meaningful way. So mentorship is not easy, and it's easy to get discouraged. But that's one thing, I, again, I, I think we really need to focus on. Um, some of our groups within Fedora have, a, have formal mentorship processes, things like the packaging group or the ambassadors group. We want to, may want to look at those and see if there are ways to streamline those, update those, make those more effective. There's other groups within Fedora that don't have a formal mentorship plan. And maybe they want to, to think about doing that. What are the things that can help on-road somebody? What are the things that they can do to help somebody feel like they are actively contributing and, and getting some value out of it? the act of contributing back to Fedora? Uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. <coughs> uh, item number four I want to talk about is what I call the STP problem. Where STP stands for same two people or same ten people. Right? The whole point of mentorship is that you're not stuck doing the same thing next year or the year after that. We all want to grow, right? We all want, want to change. We all, all want the flexibility to say, I'm overwhelmed, I need to take a step back, or hey, this other role looks interesting, or this other thing looks interesting. We all want that flexibility. To be able to do that, we have to have the next generation ready to step up in, into our shoes and do the things that we're doing now. I'll admit right now, I don't want to be FPL forever. Someday I'm going to pass that baton on to, on to one of you. Okay? Love me the FPL. 
What's that? Long live the FBL. Long live the FBL. So, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, think about that as you're as you're doing your work. But when you're having your weekly meetings or biweekly meetings in, in in Fedora, think about not only what are we accomplishing this week or or this month, but think about how are we going to make sure that a year from now we have fresh blood that's helping and, and, and growing as we have people drop out from various. The next thing I want to talk about are Fedora events. I think we do a pretty good job with our kind of premier events, our, our big fun cons and those sorts of things. They're not easy to pull off. Anybody who here who has organized a fun con will tell you it's a lot of details, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of stress to pull off a fun con event. Hey, Robin, how hard is it to pull off a fun con? It's easy. Awesome. <laughs> so anybody here will tell us that. So, but we also have other events that we do, and the ones I want to highlight in, in particular are FADs, or Fedora Activity Days. How many people here have been to a FAD? Okay. Now, the first FAD I went to, it was kind of an interesting experience. Uh, I sat down and we got, I think we had six or seven people there, and we had one goal, and we said, we're going to accomplish this goal in the next three days. And then we accomplished that goal, and then we wrote up a blog post, this is what we did, this is how we solved this. And I thought that was pretty good. Um, unfortunately, over the last couple of years, I've seen kind of a slide in, in, in some of the ways that we do FADs. Some of the FADs tend to be more of a smorgasbord event where it's, hey, let's just get all these people together and kind of hope that something good falls out of it. Or let's get these people together at this event. Yeah, and they're going to man the booth and hand out CDs. But what goals do you have for your FAD beyond that? And what kind of reporting happens after the FAD? So I would like to see more FADs. But more than that, I would like to see better fads that have, again, one simple goal in mind. If you can't enumerate in you know, 25 words or less what it is that you're trying to accomplish with that fad, then you're probably not going to get it accomplished in a couple of days. And then, again, we expect people to come back and report and say, this, this was our goal, this is what we did, this is what we accomplished. It's okay if you don't, didn't get it completely accomplished, as long as we can all learn those lessons that the figured out as you were doing. So again, a renewed effort in FADs. The other thing I'll say about FADs is that um, tend to have quite a number of FADs in North America. Europe does pretty good with FADs. Other parts of the world, Latin America, Asia Pacific region, tend to have fewer FADs. And so I'd like to try to increase the number of FADs around the world so that they're, so that they're fairly deep. The last, the last of my five items is SIGs, or special interest groups. And I love this picture because, you know, if you're going to go scuba diving and you don't have the, the, the professional gear, what do you do? You make it yourself and you hold it together and say, oh, we're going we're to make something that works, right? Okay? That's exactly how special interest groups work in Fedora. Okay? I'd like to highlight a couple of them that I think have been very successful over the past year or so. The first one is the cloud city. When the cloud sync first started up, it was a couple of people saying, you know, it really kind of stinks that Amazon EC2 that hasn't had an updated Fedora image since Fedora 8. Maybe we could do something about that. Anybody follow the cloud sync these days? How many people are, are part of the cloud sync? Just raise, raise your hand. Right, that's a pretty good sized sync. Are you getting stuff done? Yes. Absolutely. Are you, are you doing more than just worrying about Amazon EC2 images? Yes. Is it exciting? Is it fun? Yes. We need more of that. Um, another uh, SIG that I think has done, uh, had some tremendous growth and a lot of excitement around it over the past little while is the ARM SIG. And I know that there's a lot of people that say, there's a lot of buzz about ARM, but I don't get it. Um, I was one of those people um, until I learned a little bit more and realized that ARM's kind of fun. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. First of all, um, lots of low cost, low power devices. Um, lots of lots of cutting edge stuff happening with ARM, but it's really a chance to help change the world. Well, now I know you've all seen these OLPC laptops, right? I remember the first FUDCON I went to in Raleigh. What's that been five years ago, four years ago? Um, people were walking around. And, oh, that's that's really cool. Those are really cool. Um, but what you may not know is that the OLPC laptops are moving over to the ARM architecture. They've already got 2.4 million of these things out in the field. I think there's 4 million promised at this point, and they're all based on Fedora. And not only are we cool, okay, people are using our operating system, that's great, but we really have a chance to help change the world. Okay? 
I love this picture right here. This picture is from, from the country of Paraguay, the city of Calcupe. Um, about 17, 18 years ago, I lived about five miles from where this school is. And so I've seen the poverty that was there. I've seen the people that don't have access <coughs> to infrastructure, access to education, and what that can do to people. And I think we have a, a, a tremendous opportunity in things like old PC and arm development and things like that. Not just to give somebody a computer, but to really fundamentally change and lift people up <coughs> and change what we do as we do. So, oh, here's, John, John's got one right here. Here's, here's one of the old PC laptops running on an ARM processor. The ARM processor is really nice from a low power standpoint. Um, that, that can be run off a solar panel, that can be run off a hand crank, that can be run off a <coughs> So that, that's kind of cool. I would love to see ARM become a primary architecture by Fedora 18. It's not going to be easy. John, John and some of the other people that are helping out, you know, Peter, of course, Chris Tyler, and the whole Seneca group, raise your hand. Done, done tremendous work so far, but we've still got some work to do. But I would love to see that as a, as a goal for 2012, to have ARM as a, as a primary architecture. Anyway, that's, that's some of my, uh, my goals. But at the end of the day, this is a, a proverb that I think I, I shared in last uh, year's talk in, in Tempe, which is, talk doesn't cook rice. Right? We can sit here and talk all day long about what we want to do, but now's the time to actually go out and do some work. So I encourage you, as you're in, in the sessions today and tomorrow with the rest of FUDCON, you're talking a lot, you're having great conversations, you're making your plans, you're making your goals. Please remember that talk doesn't cook rice. You need to, you need to step up, be ready to do the work, and go out and make 2012 the best year for, for, for tomorrow. Again, we ask you to please share with your friends that can't come to FUDCON this time, whether you do that by blogging, whether you do that by social media, microblogging, you choose the, the method that works best for you. But please go out and share your experiences, share your thoughts with those who can't make it. We have thousands and thousands of people in Fedora. We have a couple hundred people here in this room. And we want to make sure we share this experience with them. So please do that. We've especially asked those who re received any sort of a, 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 a scholarship or stipend for, for travel, those sorts of things, to please um, that's really the only thing we ask is please, please use that opportunity to, to share your experience with everyone else. Um, with that, I'll end my talk. I, I, I hope to have time for questions, but we're short on time here. So come grab me in the hallway uh, if you have questions or comments. But thank you very much. <coughs>